For three decades, no journalist was more controversial, more iconoclastic, or more quoted than Dorothy Thompson. Her syndicated column reached millions, and she was heard by millions more on the radio. Katharine Hepburn played her in a movie, and Time magazine named her the most influential woman in America, second only to Eleanor Roosevelt. Then, within a few short years, her columns were being canceled, and speaking engagements began disappearing. For the crime of saying what she believed, she was silenced. Today, only a handful of people even know her name. With your support, we can change that. Hi, I'm Allison Weir, the founder of If Americans Knew and president of the Council for the National Interest. Dorothy Thompson was a true champion of justice, free speech, and women's rights. She was an ardent opponent of the corporatization of news coverage and one of the first to bring the story of the Palestinian people to America. Right now, you have the opportunity to uncover the incredible story of Dorothy Thompson with this documentary from Alternate Focus. Whether you give $5 or $500, please make a contribution in any amount right now. We truly appreciate your support. In 1931, Dorothy Thompson became the first Western journalist to interview Adolf Hitler. At the time, she didn't believe he would amount to anything, but just two years later, she became his fiercest critic. She was considered by most people to be the chief and leading voice against the Nazis in the West. The Nazis actually established something called the Dorothy Thompson Emergency Squad in Berlin, whose job it was to monitor whatever she wrote and said about them worldwide. Uh, she, Hitler, Hitler got crazy when he talked about Dorothy Thompson. Dorothy received orders from the Gestapo, vacate Germany within 24 hours. Back in the U.S., she became a national hero. She, uh, she was on the cover of every magazine you can imagine in America. She was, apart from uh, writing a political column three times a week, she also broadcast on radio, uh, on the NBC Blue Network uh, frequently. She had a, had a kind of homey, uh, woman's corner-minded column in the Ladies' Home Journal every month where she got to talk about the, something besides politics. She received something like 150 requests to speak in one week in New York in 1936. I don't think we have anyone like this now who's in, combined in one person the way it was with Dorothy. But in 1945, everything would change. For a quarter of a century, Dorothy had been an ardent supporter of the effort to build a Jewish state in Palestine, the Zionist movement. The, the Zionist leaders uh, regarded Dorothy Thompson as a great friend and ally, a strong voice for justice in their cause. As the war was coming to a close, Dorothy decided to travel to Jerusalem. She thought that the justice and uh, decency required that the world respond in some way for the Jews of Europe, that something had to be done to address this, this unprecedented atrocity that had taken place in Europe. And so she went to Israel, uh, to Palestine, to see how it would work there. At the time, Palestine was being called a land without a people for a people without a land. But Dorothy didn't see it that way. She was confronted immediately with the reality of the Palestinians, the Palestinian people, the Palestinian nation. She said, you can't, you can't pay for Hitler's crimes in a part of the world that had nothing to do with Hitler or his crimes. Dorothy's warnings about the direction the Middle East was heading went unheeded. Instead, she was met with accusations of racism. People were canceling her lecture engagements. She was being dropped from radio. Uh, she was being dropped by papers around the country uh, who had syndicated her because she was 
at first they didn't say anti-Zionist or anti-Israel. They said soft on Germany. They said uh, soft on the Nazis, Hitler loving, which was perfectly ridiculous since she had been only a few years previously the voice against Hitler. But suddenly she was Hitler loving. She said uh, Israel was the only state in human history to be canonized at birth. It is unassailable. You cannot critique it. You cannot challenge it. It is perfect. And she refused to accept that. And that was at great cost to her career and, for that matter, her livelihood.